been since the plague started. Lord, Holy Father God, be thorough with us. Be thorough with us. Because we have hard, stiff-necked hearts. And we have hard, wicked hearts and stiff necks. And as I said from day one, we're not in a repenting mood, and we're still not. Turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 29 through 31 says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. And I, I want to just emphasize uh, two things there, that I'm, I'm just so 100% uh, confident about. Uh, big time, and, and I've been preaching it for many years. God has never blessed disobedience. God does not bless disobedience now, no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation, and God will never bless disobedience. But He will bless obedience. The situation with Jerry Falwell Jr. and his wife Becky Falwell don't be shocked at that this is how that kind of stuff always ends up in a big old mess a big old mess and that's how your sin went up that's how my sin will end up. If we persist in sin, God is going to make sure it's up in a big old mess. I need to just go ahead and be confess the sin and repent of the sin. Don't spin anything. Tell the truth and go sit down somewhere for a while. Stop thinking foolishly that you still have the same status. You do not. Exit stage right. And go get right with God. And salvage the thing that reigns. The Bible Knowledge Commentary of the Seminary says about this very powerful passage, and I forgot to tell you about the other part, our God is merciful. I don't care who you are, if you're a child of God, if you're willing to humble yourself and pray and seek God's face, and call it quits, and surrender to God, to your first love, God is so merciful. He'll begin to cleanse you. And he'll fix you up and, and get you squared away so that you can really go and serve him. But you got to go through the process. You can't rush it. The Bible Knowledge Commentary says, after the strong warning against idolatry, Moses spelled out the consequences of neglecting that warning.
after in the land a long time and have become secure, they might forget the Lord and their need to trust Him alone. And this this happens all the time with God's people. This is what happened with uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. and his wife, Be- Becky, or whatever her name is. The dictionary calls it hubris. You get so relaxed. You have all the heart could wish, all the money you want, all the time you want, all the leisure you want, all the pleasures of life you want, and you feel like a little G-God, and you think you can fly in the face of God, and you think that you have a special relationship with God, that God will not judge you for your sins, and God is not your buddy, and he's definitely not your sin buddy. He even dealt with that in the Bible. He talks about, see, you thought I was like you, didn't you? God does not roll like that. Whenever there's sin involved, I can assure you God is not in it. They would then be easily seduced into idolatrous worship which would corrupt them and provoke God's anger. In our day, the worship of materialism, the worship of money, the worship of pleasure, hedonism, hedonism, lust, lasciviousness, adultery, fornication, swinging, and all such demonic foolishness. And we think, uh, like King Solomon brought out in Ecclesiastes, we think that because uh, judgment is not swift, that we are getting away with something. But uh, as the old saints used to say, the will of God grinds slow. Well, it's going to catch up with you. It grinds show. You can bank on it. The will of God grinds slow, uh, but it keeps grinding, and it grinds show, and it will get you eventually. And what God is doing for you is giving you space to repent on your own. But unwise people don't repent. They just keep on going. The Bible talks about that, how that the wise man sees the danger and stops and he goes back. The foolish keep on going deeper, deeper, deeper into it until they fall off into the ditch. Moses invoked heaven and earth as witnesses because of their permanence and unchanging character in contrast with the fickleness of human hearts. This certain judgment would take two forms, a dispersion among the nations with a great loss of life and a giving over to idolatry. Anybody who knows anything about uh, the Hebrews the Jews, and their history has been a very painful, 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 hard journey. Many, many millions have died, and, they, and, and, and no people have been dispersed to the four corners of the world like Israel, Israelites, the Jews. They're in every country of the world. They always rise to the top as well because they are still God's people with special gifts and talents. They always, wherever, it doesn't make any difference what country they go to, they are different and they always rise to the top 
and uh, in every field almost. But they have suffered greatly because of their sin. And all of God's people, even in the Christian family, suffer chastisement because of our sin. Don't be shocked at that. This is the way. This is the way God has chosen to deal with His people through chastisement. See, God has no problem blessing you with a beautiful temple laid out in gold and just magnificent the world has never seen it and 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 the most beautiful piece of property and land in the world right in the center of the world god has no problem blessing you with that and then god has no problem taking it away from you and dispersing you and making you think that you'll never get back because he has the power to give it to you. And he has the power to take it away from you. He'll take away your little kingdom. And scatter it. Because God does not play when it comes down to. Your sinning against him. When he's done all of this for you. God is nobody to play with. God has no problem blessing you with. Everything and taking everything away from you and dispersing you uh, to the four corners of the world. It doesn't, it doesn't bother him at all. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it, but he will. And that's why he tells parents, yes, your child is so precious, so beautiful. I know because I created that child, that, uh, that, that, that baby, that young child, that toddler, that uh, six year old, ten year old, eleven year old, twelve. I, I know all that. But here's how I want you to deal with them. They do evil. They disobey you. You chastise them. What? Me hit my precious little child? Are you kidding me? Yes, that's what I want you to do. I want you to whip their butts. Otherwise, they're going to do like some people are doing. And, uh, as in the newspaper today, that because due to the plague pandemic, there are people, young people, children abusing their parents. What? What? Look at me real good. What? You see, you see, you see, you see, you see my eyes. You, you see my eyes. Do that means this this crazy eyes right there. Uh, see, that's crazy. Crazy eyes right there. See, when I do that right now, that's crazy, crazy eyes. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that, that's acceptable. That would not happen in my house. That'd be the last time they ever, if they even thought about raising their hand against me or their mother, that'd be the last time, I assure you, they ever raised their hand at anybody. Are you kidding me? Parent abuse? I never, I never even thought about it. I never heard of that before. Parent abuse. I'm not talking about old people. I'm talking about young people, man, teenagers, and so forth, abusing their parents. I wish you would. I wish you would. I wish you. I'll just jump. See, I'm that kind of parent. <laughs> I know. If you even have that kind of thought, boy, I tell you, a girl, whoever you are. Oh no, oh no, no. You 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 will experience uh something that you'll never forget. See, if you don't whip their butts while they're growing up, they're gonna grow up and whip your butt like these people are doing. This is why some parents are afraid of their own children. Afraid are, are you kidding me? Afraid of somebody you help bring into the world? No, 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 no. I'm from the old school. I mean, the mothers, the single mothers back in my day, they didn't play that. My mother did not play that. No, no, sir. Shirley Louise White, my mother. Mm -mm. And I, I, I'm, I'm calling her Shirley Louise White. I don't say that. I don't call. I'm almost 60 years old. I don't call my mother by her first name. 
I've never called my mother by first name. I'm, I'm, I'm. You don't know my mother, so I'm telling you her name. I, I'm not. I, 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 could, I, I, I can't even fix my mouth to do that. I won't do that. I never did that to my dad. So God wants you to chastise your children or your children are going to grow up and whip your butts and abuse you like it's in the news today. And look at my eyes real good. See, this, this is what, especially my boys, uh, see, when, I, when, I, when I'm getting on their case about something and I'm getting ready to whip them, but look at, look at my eyes real good. See, you see, you see crazy, don't you? Because, see, you want to act crazy, I can look crazy too. I can act crazy too. I put that Denzel look on you. What? Huh? What? What? <laughs> then, then you know, then they get that little laugh. <laughs> oh, nigga. Oh, nigga. What? Uh-uh. No. And I suggest you get that look. There's all this appeasing your devilish child. That's not going to help that child. All that appeasing and crying and boo-hooing and pleading with them. Are you kidding me? You better start praying and start whipping butts. That's what you need to do. Because God's going to whip your butt if you don't, by the way. Okay? See, that's one of the reasons why I chastise my You know why I chastise my children? Because God says so, number one. Number two, he chastised me. And that's what changed my life. He loved me enough to chastise me. And he told me, I'm just not going to leave you the way you are now. And you can't serve me your way. He made it very clear to me. That's, that's after I got saved. So I know chastisement works. Because it worked on me. And then number three, if I don't do what he tells me to do regarding my children, I'm basically saying I love my children more than I love him. And he, he's not going to tolerate that. So he's going to chastise me too. I'm just trying to help you in your own family. You can do what you want. If you want children running around the whole house and crazy and uh, raiding the refrigerator and no control and they just do whatever they want and then go back to the room and get on five devices at the same time and, and, and be stabbing each other and all kind of scars and everything. Uh, no, sir. I'm, I've never had that kind of chaos in my house and I never will. No, sir. Remember the crazy eyes now. See, I'm saved. No, no, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm saved. I love Jesus, but I can I can put them crazy eyes on you. And when I do that, I'm that, that mean I mean business. See, so uh, I don't even want to hear nothing about no parent abuse. Parents are afraid of their children. Are you kidding me? I blame you for that. I don't blame the children. I blame you. You did something wrong. Where you all in your own house that you working your behind off to keep them in. And you're afraid of them. You're afraid to tell them something. You're afraid to tell them to give you the phone because they may throw the phone at you. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I whip their butts with that phone. And they'll never have it again. Anyway. This prophecy was fulfilled in the Assyrian and Babylonian captivities, but its greatest fulfillment came in the dispersion of Israel after she rejected Jesus Christ. The later days may refer to any time after the initial dispersions, but their ultimate reference is to the time when the Lord will return to earth to establish his 1,000-year kingdom. At that time, a repentant Israel will finally seek the Lord, look for him with all her heart and soul, and will obey him. In Deuteronomy, Moses repeatedly stressed the need for wholehearted devotion to the Lord, either in or out. Don't be lukewarm. Be hot or cold. Make up your mind what you're going to do. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I have added for my house, we're going to serve the Lord up in here. 
Now, that's a fact. You can be a devil or you can be a Judas or whatever you want to be. But if you're living in my house, you're going to serve the Lord up in here. Now, that's a fact. And you can, you can believe that. Or you will have to leave. And I mean that. Moses repeatedly stressed the need for wholehearted devotion to the Lord by the words, with all your heart and with all your soul, uh, Israel's final return to her Savior will be due not to any goodness of their human hearts, but rather to her merciful God. The Hebrew word translated merciful refers to the tender compassion of a mother toward her helpless infant. So even if Israel forgets her God, he will not abandon his morally helpless children because he has the tender compassion of a father, of course, and of a mother, and because he made an inviolable covenant with Abraham and confirmed it to Isaac and Jacob by oath. Since God will not forget his covenant, neither should Israel forget their covenant with God. And God cannot lie. He cannot lie. The prophet Leonard Ravenhill said, Oh, that believers would become eternity conscious. If we could live every moment of every day under the eye of God, if we did uh, every act in the light of the judgment seat of Christ, if we sold every article in the light of the judgment seat, if we prayed every prayer in the light of the judgment seat of Christ, if we tithe all our possessions in the light of the judgment seat of Christ, if we preachers prepared every sermon with one eye on damned humanity and the other on the judgment seat of Christ, then we would have a Holy Ghost revival that would shake this earth and that in no time at all would liberate millions of precious souls End of quote, but I believe it. <clears throat> I believe what the prophet said. I believe that with all my heart. That's why I do what I do. I believe what he just said. In short order, this could happen. But we first must humble ourselves, pray, seek God's face, turn from our wicked ways, and repent and Get back to Jesus Christ, our first love. Every last one of you here, every last one of you out there, you need to do that. Now to our news segment, our briefing news segment. According to the Casper Star Tribune, about 45 coronavirus cases in Fremont County, Wyoming, are tied to three church related outbreaks. I'm still telling Christian people, you do not have to gather at a building. You can have some of the best church services you've ever had in spirit and in truth, right from your home where the church began. Because the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at all times. If you're worshiping in spirit and in truth, I guarantee you, you can have a worship experience just as deep from your living room couch or your love seat or your comfy chair or even from your bed. But I suggest you get out of your bed as you would in a church building. Right now, that's just not wise. And those of you who are more vulnerable than others, don't do it. If you're black, if you're Hispanic, if you're past 55, 
don't do it. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. And this is one time I'm telling you to disobey your pastor if he's telling you to do that. Uh, You shouldn't do that until this is over. However, you should go to church because the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ is still rolling on, cannot help but roll on, plague or pandemic or not. Uh, But the church is not the building, never has been. According to ALX News, now the Health Department of Alexandria, Virginia, has issued a self-quarantine advisory for anyone who attended Cadane Marette Church from August 14th through the 17th. According to the Martinsville Bulletin, Pastor Mark Price of the Greater New Bethel Holiness Church in Martinsville, Virginia, died of the coronavirus. More than 59 members of the church have tested positive for the coronavirus, and 15 of them were hospitalized. Okay? So these reports are true. They're not made up. <clears throat> these people are no different than you. Uh, and uh, this thing is real. And there's still many people who don't believe it. They believe that they're invincible and all of that. Uh, it, let me just tell you now, if the coronavirus can get the fastest man alive, it can run him down, you saying boat? then it can get your fat self. Excuse me. Okay? So don't be foolish. Uh, This is a light plague. Things can and probably will get worse here soon. But you can at least escape this plague because God is allowing you to hide from this plague. And if you have good sense, that's what you will do. According to the Republic Times, Life Church X in Waterloo, Missouri, announced that it would hold services online only for the time being after church members, including Pastor Matt Heck and his wife, tested positive for the coronavirus plague disease. According to Kyoto News, Sarang Jiel Church in South Korea has been linked to 959 coronavirus cases. According to WOOD TV, Caledonia High School in Michigan is closing its building after four students tested positive for the coronavirus plague disease. According to the Daily Progress News, Arkansas is reporting at least 411 students, teachers, and staff at public schools are actively infected with the coronavirus plague disease as the state's new cases continue to rise. <clears throat> According to KDVR, 155 Colorado college students are under quarantine in the Loomis Hall residence hall after one student tested positive for coronavirus a day after arriving on campus. According to News Channel 5 in Tennessee, Nine Tennessee schools are now closed to in-person learning statewide because of the coronavirus plague outbreaks inside their buildings. This is why I have told you, parents, if you love your children, keep them home at this time. Do not try to put your children into a plague-filled school and environment. Because 
see, it's going to be worse on the children and on you for you to start that. You go out there, somebody gets sick. You've been out there two or three days. You did all that preparation. And then they got to send your child back home and quarantine you and the child and everybody in your family for 14 days or more. And some schools have determined that they're not going to have school at all this fall. You went out there on a false hope. And now your hopes are dashed. Your children are depressed because you did not prepare them over the summer for the fact that they were going to be home in the fall. You believe lies of politicians and preachers and happy talk people. So many people have died because of happy talk politicians and happy talk pastors and leaders. And I know some don't like it. They don't like me telling, telling you that. But that's the truth. You know, this, 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 this American spirit stuff. And this, the American way, you know, we, we are Americans. We can go out here and, and we can uh, knock down a plague, uh, a coronavirus plague. No, no, you, no, 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 you can't. See, see. <clears throat> You're not that great. You're not that powerful, Americans. And nobody loves America more than me. God has blessed me tremendously. By being born in America. And I've traveled around the world. And I know how uh, good we have it. So don't, don't try to put no anti-American stuff on me. I'm just telling you, you better listen to God. Listen to what God is telling you in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit. And you need to protect yourself and your family. I saw a little girl today. It's a shame before God. And I want this up, too, please. Make sure you all post this uh, right here. Little girl. Little girl at the March on Washington. The commitment March is what they called it. Little girl. She said, men, stand up. Black men, stand up. She said to repeat it. I, I mean, she, she, she couldn't have been no more than 14, 13, 15. I don't know. She looked like she was that to me. But she was telling black men, black men, stand up. Black men, stand up. Black men, stand up and protect your families. And, man, the crowd just went crazy. Oh, boy. That's a shame before God that a little girl got to tell black men to stand up. What has the world come to? What has the world come to? But the Bible says a child shall lead them. A child shall lead them. But I've been, I, I, I said amen because I've been telling black men to stand up for years. For years. <clears throat> so keep your children home out of the storm called the coronavirus hurricane. Okay. Category five. It's a category five when you all got over 200,000 people dead in one nation. Almost a quarter of a million people. That's a category of 10. Don't put your children out in that. Because children, little children are dying from the coronavirus plague. It's in the news today that a man who, he, he, he got the coronavirus plague. He beat it and now he's got it again. He's a, they say he's the first man in America. I doubt it. Right now, some of you have been hit with foreclosure letters and eviction notices. Now, and this, and this is blowing your mind because your mind and your heart is saying, where is the compassion? Right here. Right here. Cut, go cut those lights on. Right here. See, that, that's what your mind is. Your mind is blown. Now, this is a plague pandemic. That's what you're saying.
This is a plague pandemic. Just this week, another one million, over one million people for the first time uh, uh, signed up for uh, unemployment. We don't have jobs. And you're sitting on the couch crying right now because you got an eviction notice in the midst of of a coronavirus plague pandemic. Or you got a foreclosure notice. You know why? Because you didn't listen to the prophet. I've been telling you for, for, for months. It's going to be a strange thing that happened to you. You're going to hear about rent forgiveness and you don't have to pay your rent, but you can stay in your house, and you're going to hear that from the government, and so forth, and so on. But when the letter comes to your house, or when they come to your door, when Bubba and them come to your door and knock on the door, and you don't answer the door, and you don't answer the phone, you don't answer texts, you don't answer letters, uh, you don't answer drone notices, or whatever they send you. And they're getting ready to set your stuff out on the street. Because they have, in their minds, a job to do. <clears throat> they know that you're going to take it personally. But they're not taking it personally. This is business to them. And the, and the government has done what I told you they were going to do. They were going to let that go. And, and some politicians are going to use it to try to get you to go back to work. Out into the hurricane coronavirus, category 10. And you're going to ask, where is the compassion? Where is the love? There's not going to be any compassion. There's not going to be any love. This is going to be business and law. And and they're people. You got to understand, these people who come and do this, they have a different mentality. They 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 don't want they don't want they they don't want to hear. It. Now some are act like they're listening, but that 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 doesn't. Your talking does not mean anything to them. You've got to go. Because, see, one thing that people have not talked about, <clears throat> they talked about the people staying in their house, which they don't own and that they're paying rent on. But nobody talked about the landlord. The landlord is not getting his money or her money. And then the people that they got to pay, they're not getting their money. And this, this ripples on up and goes on up the ladder. And, 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 and when the big man at the top say he's got to have his money, now, or, or you or you have to get the people out of there and get somebody else in there who can pay it. That's what's going to happen. There's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. Don't take it personally. What you should have done is you should have done what I told you to do, and that is you should have left on your own. And be a, you know, just be a stand-up guy and a stand-up gal and tell them... Uh, listen, you know what the situation is. That's all you got to say. Look them straight in the eyes. So I'm sure you're going to let me out of my leash and all of that. So I'm going to give you your house back, your apartment back, whatever. And, uh, and any kind of help that you can give me to find something else would be greatly appreciated. Now we're talking, see, in their minds. Because they, they knew it was going to come to this. And so by your voluntarily coming to them, then, then, then we got a better situation. Eviction is not a good situation. Foreclosure. Once, once that process starts, once that, once that process starts, there's, just, there's no talking. No, no, no talking, no negotiating, no friends, nobody, you know, you know me, I know you, no, none of that. No favor. None of that. It's too late. And 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 uh, quite frankly, you should not have allowed yourself to get into that situation. 
trusting in the big G-O-V instead of the big G-O-D. And I know some of y'all don't like this kind of talk, but I'm trying to help you. Because this is not a game. This, uh, this is happening, people. And you don't want to believe that it's happening. You don't want to accept it. And you think a president is going to save your, save you. And they're not. I don't care who becomes president. If this plague pandemic called the novel coronavirus is still around and getting worse with the flu in the fall and winter, it's going to be hell to pay, people. Millions are going to die. Millions are going to be homeless. This is not a game. Because, see, we, we're too pretty to repent. We're not in a repenting mood. None of us. We have been bamboozled and deceived by the prosperity gospel and the false doctrine that God was going to, is going to just put up with all our evil and bless us anyhow. Uh, that's not the God I know. I, I don't see that God in the Bible nowhere. Nowhere. I don't see him. No, I, don't, I don't know who that is. That's not my God because he doesn't play that. And Jesus does not either, even though he's full of grace and truth and love and compassion and meekness and lowliness. But he doesn't roll like that because he, he, he told you what the deal was. He asked you the question. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? If you love me, like you say, if you love me, keep my commandments. He's not playing. His, his face is straighter than mine right now. If you love me, keep my commandments. All this, I praise you, Lord, I love you, Lord. All of these lying songs with these dirty, whorish, swinging, adulterous, homosexual hands up in the air like you just don't care. You're all going to hell with that mess. He's going to say, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So hopefully you have some time. To take advantage of alternative housing that I have been suggesting to you for the past over 100 days. You can buy off-grid housing from LandWatch.com. LandWatch is an online leader in rural properties and land for sale, including hunting land, timber land, farms for sale, ranches for sale, development sites and home sites you know if you got the right kind of money you can get uh, a ranch where the people can't even see a house from the street all they see is a gate and a road especially if you live in Texas and they might see some cattle that's it they don't even know there's a house down, down. They, they don't even know there's a house up there or down there, wherever. That's what you need. And if you pray and if you go ahead and, and sell the house back to the bank and go buy something cash with the equity or something like that, now we're cooking with oil. Because, see, when I say move... I'm talking about moving into something that is paid for, paid for, that you own, that nobody can take away, and that you don't have any payments on. Second, you can buy a mobile home. Let's see. Uh, they're selling a little. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, 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 this, this just came to my mind. I read an article. You know how people are working at home now? They have these little pop-up houses, pop-up offices that you can buy for under $30,000 cash money. And you can put it in your backyard. But they also have tiny houses for less, for $30,000 $30, or less or more, depending on what you want. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. But right now, you can buy mobile homes, used mobile homes, or a new one, cash money, 
Take your equity, take your savings, take your 401, whatever you got. And cash it in and get and buy yourself a house or put on a piece of property somewhere that your family owns or whatever. Get it all hooked up because you not only need a home, my friends, and my wife would tell you I'm big on having a place to operate from. You got to have a place to operate from, man. A place that you can take care of your personal business and do what you have got to do to live. Okay? So it's not just by having a pretty home, the HGTV, all that. Uh, oh, I, I get so sick of these people. Oh, look at that. That's so pretty. That's now that's a nice space right there. You need a place to live, a place to eat, a place to use the bathroom, uh, a place to sleep, a place to operate from, to do what you do, whatever you're doing, to be able to get it done out of the sun and out of the snow and out of the rain, man. It doesn't matter. What, how it looks like, and all that kind of that don't that doesn't mean that don't mean anything, man. That does not mean anything. That come out of the prosperity, prosperity God, gospel thing, foolishness. You people sit around your house, walking, and I mean, and and, and looking at your house and saying, "Oh, that's so pretty, that's so nice." That, that you're not living. What are you doing? What are you accomplishing in your life? How are you helping somebody sitting around tomorrow? That's a nice light fixture. You know, I think we ought to go down to Home Depot and tweak it a little bit and get another chandelier and so forth. People. You're not living. You're just looking at stuff. You need a place to live, to operate from. And when and, and people don't people don't care about where you live, you think they do. Most people now they they just look at what you live. You living in a big fine house on Port Charles, they shake their head. Boy, what kind of debt is over that man? And how, how are they making it with that kind of debt? That's all that is. Champion Home Builders at championhomes dot com. Don't worry about it. I never thought I would even consider a trailer, a modular home, or mobile home, double wide. You know, we as black folks, especially, we frown on stuff like that. Living in a trailer. We did that back in the day down in the country, down in the south. We we want to do better now. Well, uh, the coronavirus plague pandemic monster, uh, it will determine all of that for you. Yes, it will. For most of you. 99% of you. I'm talking to the 99%. I'm not talking to the 1% rich. Black and white. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to the 99% living paycheck uh, to paycheck. For decades, Champion has served as a leader in the manufactured housing industry. And one of the largest modular home builders in North America. They provide manufactured and mobile homes, modular homes, and park model RVs. Okay? And I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I well, see one of the reasons why I don't want to trail because if a hurricane comes, if a tornado comes. <laughs> Do you see? Did, did you see what? Hurricane Laura did to find big brick, send the block homes and buildings and churches. The hurricane came through and just tore off the back end of a church, well built. So you know, don't don't bring that. If God's going to protect you, He's going to protect you in a trailer, just like He would protect you in a house. And if it's time for you to go, you're going to go. Just like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. You got you to go up. You're going to be you going up. You're going up in the whirlwind. You in Toto or whatever the dog name is. Okay. So there's some things you can't control. Third, 
you can buy a mini house from tiny home builders. A mini I never heard of that. Tiny, yeah, it's a tiny house, mini house. There are many companies that are doing that today. Many people are living in tiny houses. The, the This is one smart thing that the uh, millennial generation is doing. They, they buy in tiny houses and RVs and cheap uh trailers, used trailers and motorhomes and and uh, used double wides uh, and paying paying for it cash. Therefore, they have no debt and they, you know, put it on the, pro- the property of their parents or whatever the case might be. Another thing the millennials are doing, they're going out into the country and they're buying old cheap houses, some for $18,000. Some for fifteen thousand, some for twenty five thousand, some for thirty thousand, some for more. But they're paying cash for those old houses, and then they go in and they, you know, fix them up the way they want to. And most of them, many of them, live a minimalist lifestyle anyway. So they they they're not going to do much. And by the way, people are moving out of New York, and there was a report in the newspaper today. That there are people moving out of uh, uh, out into the country, all across the nation, to get away from the crowds and the coronavirus plague. I would recommend that you go do likewise, as fast as you can, as long as you can, because that door is going to shut here soon. The marketplace of tiny home builders is your source for buying and selling your tiny house. You can find motorhomes and RVs at motorhome specialists where the world shops. That's MHSRV.com. National RV is one of the most experienced and largest recreational vehicle manufacturers in the United States. All right, so at the beginning of this journey, with this briefing, uh, I told you that I would help you with the home family life. That is uh, how to live with your family, husband and wife and children in the house 24-7, where you do everything together church together, school together, uh, business together, work together, uh, is not uh, always easy. But it can be done because we did it. Uh, And so that's why I can tell you about it. And there are great benefits in doing so. It's not the American way. It's not the American way. And so, but today I'm not going to deal with the home life. I'm not going to deal with home business. I'm not going to deal with home church right now. I'm focusing right now on homeschooling. We homeschool all of our children from the time they were born until they graduated from college. That's right. They went to college at home uh, to an accredited university. But right now we're going to do a review schoolhouse from the homeschoolmom.com. Write that down. She will help you. The old schoolhouse. The old schoolhouse. Magazine offers homeschoolers a variety of resources and encouragement as well as always to learn about the latest and greatest educational resources out there. The Old Schoolhouse is a glossy, full-color magazine produced quarterly, packed with information and articles that homeschoolers enjoy reading. The magazine often features works written or created by homeschoolers and parents of homeschoolers. It also holds art and short story competitions and publishes the winning entries in the magazine and online. It is a good resource. 
if you want to be, get some encouragement regarding homeschooling your children because you're going to do that this fall and this winter whether you like it or not. So next, what is a good schedule for homeschooling? Part 10, the strong homeschool schedule. The truth is most homeschooling parents have to consider many of these things in creating a strong, a strong homeschool schedule for their week. They may participate in a co-op, have regularly scheduled outside activities, do shift work, and use a curriculum alongside interest-based learning and projects. Or they may be unschoolers whose kids nonetheless participate in a co-op and a lot of community activities, service work, and time with mentors. Everyone also has to figure in time for grocery shopping, meal preparation, laundry, home maintenance, and appointments. And many have to include part-time or full-time work. A strong weekly plan takes these things into consideration along with time for homeschooling uh, parent, time for the homeschooling parent to take a break and pursue her own interests. You might find some kind of weekly planner to be a useful tool in working out your strong homeschooling weeks and as something you can post on the fridge or the refrigerator to keep your whole family aware of the regularly occurring weekly events. With that, ladies and gentlemen, you have been briefed. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for... Uh, Lord, uh, your leadership, your guidance, and your direction during this time. Lord, help these people to follow you and not follow the government or other uh, people who do the happy talk and help them to realize that this is real and this is happening and it's going to get worse before it gets better and that they are going to have to make drastic decisions and do some drastic things to survive if they want to survive and, uh, and thrive and uh, be there for their children through a time that they uh, did not bring on. We brought this on, the older people. And so, Lord, we pray that everybody would, uh, uh, that is your children, uh, to live in such a way that they can be here for their children and not leave them alone. And we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you for this briefing. All 100 and however many it is now. And uh, we thank you for the thousands upon thousands who have heard the gospel. And uh, those who have trusted you as Savior through it. Those who have been encouraged. Those who have been informed. Those who have been rebuked and gotten mad. Even uh, those folks. Lord, uh, Help them uh, to receive it all in the spirit in which it is given and help them to pray hard, to pray without ceasing and to make the right decisions for their families during this time. And we pray now for the salvation of the lost and for the revival of the saved. Uh, help us to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways and to repent and to get back to you, our first love, Lord Jesus, for those of us who are saved. Now open the eyes of the blind and save those who are lost. 
And do all things, Lord, for your glory, praise, and honor. For the lifting up of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. For it is in his name we do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you're with us today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him for your soul's salvation from sin and uh, the power of sin and the punishment of sin in that awful place called hell. First, please understand with me that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws just as I have, just as the Pope has. We all have sinned against God. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please understand with me that because of your sins, you deserve eternal punishment in that awful place called hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. We die because of our sin. What a punishment. Our bodies go to the grave. Our eternal souls go to that awful place called hell if we don't repent and if we don't trust Christ as Savior. And so this is both physical death and spiritual death. in that awful place called hell. And hell is a very real place. Just like so many people don't believe that this coronavirus plague is real until they get it. <clears throat> there are many people, sad to say, even in the church, who don't believe that hell is real. But hell is real. Jesus Christ, in fact, preached more on hell than any prophet, any preacher, and any writer in the Bible. He preached more on hell than he did about heaven to warn us of that awful place. When he described hell one time in one of his sermons, he said, It is a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. He said, It is a place where there is weeping and wailing and grinding of teeth. Hell is a very real place. And so hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you. Straight from Jesus Christ himself. When he said to Nicodemus one night, and being the most wonderful words ever spoken in the history of the world, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Dear friend, the phrase, for God so loved the world, means that if you are in this world, God loves you, no matter what you have done. The next phrase, what the next phrase that he gave his only begotten son refers to none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus Christ, who turned water into wine. Jesus Christ, who fed thousands with a little boy's lunch. Jesus Christ, who walked on the water. Jesus Christ, caught in a storm, told the wind to be quiet and the waves to sit down, and they obeyed him. Peace, be still, he said. And the storm obeyed him. Jesus Christ, who raised people from the dead, 
healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, gave hearing to the deaf, and made the dumb to speak. This Jesus Christ, the God-man, who never committed a sin in word, thought, or deed, chose to suffer, to bleed, and to die on a cruel tree for your sins and for mine. He was buried and he rose on the third day by the power of God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So our next phrase in this verse says that whosoever believeth in him. The word whosoever means anybody at any time. The phrase believeth in him means to trust in him, to depend upon him, to rely on him, or to have faith in him. Just have faith in Jesus for your soul's salvation. He paid your sin debt. It was hard for him. It was hard for God. But he made it easy for us so that we would not die and go to hell, but rather that we would go to heaven to be with God and Jesus. Our next phrase, should not perish, refers to eternal punishment in that awful place called hell. And lastly, the phrase, but have everlasting life, means to live eternally in heaven with God. Dear friend, if you want to be saved, just do what Jesus told you. Whosoever believeth in him. That's all you need to do is believe in Christ. Trust in Christ as your Savior. Pray and ask him to save you. Call on his name. For the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to heaven. Dear friend, believe right now in your heart, right where you are, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And follow me in what is called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, repeat after me. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have sinned against you by breaking your Ten Commandments. For I have taken your holy name in vain. I've dishonored and disrespected and disobeyed my parents. I have stolen things before regardless of the value. I have coveted and lusted in my heart after people and things before. And I have lied before just to name five of your Ten Commandments. But as you know, Lord, I've committed many other sins. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. 
Help me to change. Help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you in the new life. Lord Jesus. For it is in your name I do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say congratulations to you on doing the most important.